It's tradition among St. Louis sports fans to get irrationally angry when the man responsible for upgrading the Blues or the Cardinals every offseason doesn't do what we want him to do exactly. Same old John Mozeliak grabbing all the low-hanging fruit that he can to con us into thinking he's actually doing something this offseason. Same old Doug Armstrong gave out too many no-trade clauses, so now he can't sign anyone that can actually play defense. But ladies and gentlemen, Lutz Fahnenstiel is not that guy. Not long after sending $175,000 in GAM to Nashville for an international roster slot, Lutz went to Nashville again for more trade business, this time sending an additional $75,000 in Garber Bucks and their second rounder in the MLS Super Draft to Nashville for the 17th overall pick. And that 17th overall pick is why we're here. I'm Tom Franklin, your resident soccer zombie. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this type of content. And here we go. That 17th overall pick was used to select a very interesting man from Japan, a real enigma that has captivated his fans with intrigue and excitement over the years. And that man is Hideo Kojima. No, not Hideo Kojima, Jose Kijima. If the fact that St. Louis returned to Nashville for draft day business after acquiring an international slot that Kojima could occupy wasn't eerie enough, MLSsoccer.com's mock draft actually had Kojima going to Nashville at 17th overall. Now, Kojima comes to St. Louis from Wake Forest University, where he played four seasons and logged a lot of time for the Demon Deacons, starting seven times as a freshman before becoming a regular starter his sophomore year. He also played in USL League 2 for Sarasota Paradise, and during his time there was named one of the 11 best players in USL 2. He grew up in Yokohama, Japan, and despite playing at the famed IMG Academy here in the States, he does cost City SC an international roster slot at this point, which could have been a reason he slid to 17th overall. Scouts report Kojima plays with tenacity on the field as well as a high soccer IQ. More on that in a bit. But the most interesting thing about Kojima may be the position he plays, or positions, rather. According to this graphic from IMG Academy, Kojima plays midfield, center back, rider left back, rider left wing, and forward. So if we clone Kojima into 11 players, this tells us that he can play just about any position on the field except goalie. Now over time it does appear that Kojima has narrowed his horizons a little bit. He is primarily a midfielder based on his time at Wake Forest. However, remember how I noted that he was one of the top 11 players in USL League 2 during his time in Sarasota? That was as a right back. And if you dare question Kojima on what positions he can or can't play, he'll drop a well-written essay on you. It was mentioned during the Super Draft that Kojima not only took the most meetings out of anyone at the MLS Showcase, but he brought a tactical breakdown to every team about how he'd fit in with them going forward. And not only that, but if you need tactical advice on your futsal team, check out this tweet from Christmas Day and let Jose Kojima guide your team to glory. Many City SC podcasters and fans alike didn't expect much out of City SC during the Super Draft. After all, we didn't even have a first round pick. We traded it to Colorado for Anthony Marcanic. But one could definitely be forgiven for thinking City SC might be a little gun shy about re-entering the first round this year. At the last Super Draft, City traded $175,000 in GAM and their third round pick to Seattle for the ninth overall pick to take Owen O'Malley. The midfielder from Creighton was a Generation Adidas player, once thought of as a possible first overall pick. City pounced when he fell to the ninth overall pick. Like Kojima, O'Malley also promised versatility, and City had him pegged as their right back of the future. But that future never came. As STLToday.com noted in their article about City not re-signing him, they noted that O'Malley was suspended at least twice from City 2 for violating team rules, he would eventually lose his first team spot altogether, and he didn't even play any minutes for City 2 after July 9th. At the time of recording this video in early January 2024, he has not re-signed with anyone at any level. So no, you can't accuse Luch Fahnenstiel of playing it safe or being complacent. The whole team was built on boldness. 
taking risk on relatively unknown Europeans like Joao Klaus, Eduard Leuven, and Rasmus Alm to rolling the dice on former Borussia Dortmund goalkeeper Rowan Berkey after fans thought he was washed, to having faith in Tim Parker after Houston fans thought he was washed. And when many thought City would just turtle up in the Super Draft, they doubled down by reaching up and grabbing Kojima. And when you think about it, Kojima could be the poster child for your typical City player. Intelligent, versatile, high character, high work rate, and yes, international. Now it's hard to say where Kojima fits in the 2024 roster at this point, or if he'll need some time with City too. One of the things that makes the MLS Super Draft, well, not so super, is the randomness of the players that are picked and how successful they are. For every Owen O'Malley, there's a Roman Celitano. How about a St. Louis University comparison? For every Simon Betcher, who now has to go to Denmark to get the playing time he needs, there is a Patrick Schulte, who helped guide the Columbus crew to an MLS Cup and arguably was the catalyst for that. Heck, Mark Hanek was a first round pick in 2022, the same year that Schulte, Celitano, and Betcher were picked. But with Kojima's work ethic, intelligence and versatility, one should expect that Kojima will make an impact on the main roster sooner rather than later. After all, I'm sure he's working on a very detailed breakdown on why he should be on the main roster as we speak. But what did you think of the Kojima pick and where do you see him fitting on this team long term? After all, City FC did sign a right back this offseason, Tomas Totland. So does Kojima slot in on the left back position? Does he stay in midfield? What do you think? Where do you think he goes from here? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe if you like these sort of videos. And I really do appreciate any interaction I get with this channel. After all, it's a new hobby for me. Emphasis on hobby. This is something fun for me to do because I, I like communicating with you City SC fans and I look forward to doing it more going forward. I'm Tom Franklin and Pansu no Haite Inai.